What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Hard in the Paint, where no subject is out of bounds. I know I said I was going to wait till Thursday, but I just could not do it. I just could not do it. So, without further ado, once again, I'm the man Theo. This is Hard in the Paint, where no subject is out of bounds. Let's start off first. Hmm. Elizabeth Hasselback says that turn this down a little bit Elizabeth Hasselbeck says that Black Lives Matter is the equivalent or should be labeled as a hate group Bill O'Reilly says he cannot wait to take out Black Lives Matter <sighs> okay I know I got people watching this so it is what it is let's go let's look at it like this um, if there was no racism against African Americans, there would be no Black Lives Matter movement. There wouldn't have been a Black Panther Party. There wouldn't have been the NAACA, NAACP. There wouldn't have been a Rainbow Coalition. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been none of that. Really, when it's all said and done, African Americans just want to be seen as American citizens. And when they're portrayed as something other than that, that's when they feel like it's time to stand up and say Black Lives Matter. Here's what the conservatives need to know. Here's what the Republicans need to know. And if you are just up under a rock and you don't know any better and you haven't been to a Black Lives Matter rally, you need to know it's not only black people that are saying it. It's not only black people wearing those shirts. There are white people. There are orange people. There are red people. There are yellow people. Whatever you want to call them. African American people are saying it. Uh, European Americans are saying it. Asian Americans are saying it. Latino Americans are saying it. It's a whole bunch of people saying Black Lives Matter other than just Black Lives. And the reason why they're saying Black Lives Matter, regardless of their ethnic background, is because they are conscious enough, aware enough to see that you know what? Hey, there's a problem in America. Unarmed African Americans are being gunned down on a daily basis. This is crazy. Where is this coming from? Which is my segue to say this. Police officers are now being gunned down. For no reason whatsoever. Law enforcement officers are now being gunned down. They're being executed. And that's not right. Here's my problem. The people that are speak out against law enforcement officers being gunned down for no apparent reason are the same people that will remain suspiciously silent when unarmed African Americans are being gunned down. You can't have it both ways. Um, racism is alive and well in the continental United States of America. My mother was a police officer, so I would never sit up here and say that the retaliation should be against um, police officers, especially since the ones you're going after have absolutely nothing to do with it. If you're not going to go after the ones that killed the unarmed um, black youths, and I'm not saying that you that you should, but if you are definitely not going to hold those individuals accountable, then there's no reason to be holding innocence accountable. Innocence uh, can be anyone who wears a badge or not. So that's what I'm going to have to say about that. All lives matter essentially, but for you people that are naive, um, unaware, you need to know that the reason why people are saying that black lives matter is because they are sick and tired of seeing unarmed African Americans being gunned down, whether it's by law enforcement or by private citizens. Moving right along, uh, let's see what else we have here. Yes, segue time. There seem to be a lot of people, because I, I want to read this real quick here. This is a post that was on Facebook, and I just thought this was one of the most retarded things in the world, but I, I, I digress. It is what it is at the end of the day, right? Okay. Um, a young gentleman posted on Facebook, 14 officers have been killed so far in August. A deputy pumping gas was murdered by a coward. That's That was a coward. They did that, by the way. Uh, so far, no denouncing this violence, no outcries, just silence. Where are our leaders? We're waiting, Mr. President. Your silence speaks volume. Okay, that's a slap in the face against Barack Obama. I take it personal. Why do I take it personal? Because 
during the civil rights era, which was way before social media, by the way, did we ask, did we, did we hold any of the presidents accountable to speak out against, uh, slavery? Did we hold them accountable to speak out against, uh, African Americans be de being denied their rights in the 60s. Do you as an American right now have a problem since some of you are so adamant that Barack Obama is not speaking out against the violence against police officers? Do you or would you have had a problem with presidents not speaking out against uh, the, G the Jim Crow rules back in the day? W would you have had a problem with it? Would you have had held that president accountable to speak out against it? I honestly feel like you wouldn't. And the reason why I say it is because you didn't speak out when there were issues going on with New Orleans, when G-Dub was late showing up to the party. You didn't speak out. You didn't show any animosity towards DW. As far as you were concerned, GW did exactly what GW is supposed to be doing. You cannot have it both ways. Everything is important. Either it matters or it doesn't. Don't pick and choose when it matters because it just makes you seem downright silly. I asked a question the other day on my uh, previous Heart in the Paint that if Donald Trump were making the same comments that he's making right now but was a Democratic nominee would you vote for him i still haven't got anybody to respond nobody i even uh hit somebody up on their facebook post never said anything and the reason why is because i think it's apparently obvious you're republican and you really don't care what's going on as long as it's a republican you're not going to vote democrat you're not going to vote democrat even if that's the best person because you're stuck in your Republican ways. And I can make the same argument for people that are stuck in their Democratic ways. Shout out to myself because I voted for Charlie Chris when he was a Republican. And yes, I'm certified Democrat, by the way. So I don't care uh, the Democratic, what you sign up for because they don't give you an option as to I'll wait and see who I like later on. Republican, Democrat, Independent. And those are only three options that they give you. What you sign up for is nothing more than a foundation for your beliefs. It does not mean you have to paint yourself in the box. Life is not about being painted in a box. Life is about being intelligent enough to make choices when those choices become uh, apparent. So in essence, what am I saying by that? Don't hold one president accountable for something that you would not have held another president accountable for. You're being a hypocrite. Uh, if you're not going to hold uh, George W. Bush accountable for some instances in which he should have been held accountable for. If you didn't publicly chastise him for not doing what he needed to do, don't come out from up under your rock now to hold this president accountable for. Barack Obama has done some things that I have not too particularly been fond of. The whole getting off the helicopter, saluting with the with the with the cup of coffee in the hand was not something that I was specifically proud of, especially when it was a Marines fellow servicemen standing by his side, but G-Dub did the same thing with a damn dog. And none of you said anything. None of you said anything. Only when Barack did it was there a problem. So, you're being hypocrites. Stop it. Um, now, let's get that political stuff out of the way. I like to leave with politics. I don't know why. Kevin Gates. Rapper. Concert, Florida. A female uh, Kevin said she was reaching at his crotch um, they showed video of the female grabbing at his leg either way he kicked her kicked her in her chest we're sending the wrong messages we're sending the wrong messages on both sides of the fence do I agree that women need to keep their hands to themselves yes I do I, I, I do I, I because to be honest with you, I believe everybody should keep their hands to themselves. But we're sending too many strong messages, contrary to what we're trying to say publicly, that striking a female is okay. Striking a female out of anger is okay. Striking a female when you feel, when you just pissed off is okay. And that is the wrong thing. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to say this to all my fellas. It is your responsibility to respect the women, even when the women do not respect themselves. 
there was another way Kevin could have handled handled this incident. And yes, we can all sit back and and play, you know, twenty twenty. Um, Kevin could have called security. Kevin could have called security. If she was truly groping his genitalia and he did not like it, he could have called security and had this young lady escorted out of the concert because she should not be touching him. There's no reason for it. She's there to enjoy the concert. That's all it is. Nothing more. But to kick her in her chest like that and then you perform a, you 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 want to give me a song, a rap, explain it, why you did it. Kevin, you're going to find yourself paying out more money than making money. And there's no reason for that. Um, that's that. Uh, let's move it right along because we're going to, I don't want to talk about Kevin too much no more. What he did was wrong. His response to it was wrong. Uh, what the young lady did to lead up to it was wrong. Two wrongs don't make a right though, right? That's what we've been told. That's what we've been told. Ryan Clark from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I love Ryan Clark. Uh, Ryan Clark came in and provided uh, the, the, he, he gave Troy Palmolo what Troy Palmolo needed to be Troy Palmolo. That being said, Ryan Clark has lately went on ESPN, dadgummit, Supposed to be at an appointment by now. Anyway, Ryan Clark has went on ESPN, specifically his and hers at the first take, I'm not mistaken, and he says that the Pittsburgh Steelers will not make the playoffs in 2015. <sighs> Here's my problem with, with, with what you said, Ryan, is that it's six playoff teams that are going to make the playoffs from the AFC. Six. And if we sit up here and say the Patriots are going, um, had a conversation with a friend of mine. He said he's not sure about the 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 Patriots going to win AFC East. He's not sure about Denver. He thinks Kansas City is going to win the the AFC West. Okay, Indianapolis Colts winning the AFC South. We can pretty much agree on that. But who's going to win the AFC North? Let's see. We got the Patriots so far. We've got the Colts, and we've got we've got Kansas City. So. Who do we like to win the AFC North? I personally think it's a toss-up still between the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm sorry. I'm not sold. Cleveland, no. Cleveland's not going to the playoff. And I'm still not sold on Cincinnati. I like Cincinnati mate, having a winning season, but I don't like Cincinnati having the second-best record in the AFC North. And to be perfectly honest with you, either one of those two teams who has the second-best record in the AFC North is going to make the playoff. Why? Because I'm not really sold on Alex Smith as far as leading the team to the playoff. I know he's done it with the 49ers. I know he's done it with the Kansas City Chiefs. But I do not see this man doing what it takes for his team to keep up with putting points up on the board unless the team that he's going up against is just really, really deficient in defense. So, Ryan, I humbly disagree with you. The Steelers may not win the AFC North, but they will make it to the playoffs as a wild card. That is my pick. What else are we going with here? Oh, last but not least, and this, and I'm going to say last but not least because I certainly should have ended it with this. This was appropriate. Anthony Sattler, Spencer Stone, Alex Scarletos. If you don't know who those gentlemen are, those are the gentlemen who stopped a terrorist attack overseas. Train. Spencer Stone and Alex Scarletos are Caucasian Americans. Anthony Sattler is a African American. And why do I point this out? Because over here in America, we're the only ones that care about color. We're the only ones that care about ethnicity. Ethnicity. Our enemies don't, which is why we totally need to move past this foolishness that we have going on right now. Because, see, in Europe, you can have the police officer standing next to the African-American, and he can see the African-American as nothing more than a thug. The terrorist is going to look and only see two Americans. Think about that for a second. Let that marinate. You can be a Republican over here. You can be a Democrat. You can take Bush, George W. Bush, or Jeb Bush and stand them right next to Barack Obama. And you could sit up and say, I want Barack Obama to be the one that gets killed. You can sit up and say, I want Jeb Bush or George Bush to be the one that gets killed. The terrorist is going to not give a damn and kill both of them. 
it's it's time we move past this foolishness. At some point in time, we're going to have to understand that we are in this together and we're not in this separately. At some point in time, we're going to have to realize that we're in this as a country and we're not in this ethnically. At some point in time, we're going to have to understand that it does not matter who we are. If our enemies can see us as Americans, we need to start seeing each other as Americans. And to be perfectly honest with you, when I look at these three men, there was not a question of black lives matter, white lives matter, white supremacy, black power. It was just a matter of being Americans, which is something we high time need to realize. Because see, our enemies don't care about our history. Our enemies don't care about the rebel flag. Our enemies don't care about as far as the hat that Donald Trump has on, let's make America white again. Our enemies don't care about that. All they care about is we're Americans. And, we, and we're pretty much a diverse country. Because to, be, to a degree, we don't look alike. It, we, we don't look alike. But to our enemies, they don't care about the melanin in our skin color. All they care about is we represent America. And we represent America whether we make twelve thousand dollars a year whether we make hundred twenty thousand dollars a year we represent America so it, it's it's about time that we that we got it together really to a degree y'all all pissing me off a man posted on my Facebook comment last night fuck the police that bothered me and it bothered me because not only was my mother a police officer but it bothered me because I know there are men and women out there who wear the uniform, who do their job and they do their job proudly every day to make sure that our cities are the safest cities that they can possibly be. And they're catching a huge amount of flack for what some of their ignorant brethren are doing. And some of us are not intelligent enough to know any better than to post comments like fuck the police I, I was I was ashamed about that but anyway that being said we need to get it together stop pointing fingers we need to get this ish together we need to get this ish together because trust me when it's all said and done as far as they concerned over across the water we're, we're all American we're all American that's my time I know this is an extended version of hard and paint I'm sorry for taking so long usually I keep it to 10 minutes Y'all take care. I love y'all. I'm going to see y'all again probably in about two or three days because I guarantee there's going to be something else popping off that makes me want to run my dadgum mouth. Take care. Peace.